Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about our red, yellow, and green zone chart. Okay, how did I formulate this chart? Okay, I took our database, which I think now is over 150 rooms, and I started looking at breakpoints in the groupings. And we have all sizes. I think our smallest room is 10, 10, 8. I think our largest room is 40, 40, 40. And one of them has 40 foot ceilings. Yeah. And we've got a host of other rooms in between. So what I did is I took all this data, put it on a spreadsheet, and I looked for breakpoints. I looked at size and volume and usage. And I said, what groupings can we give people that will show that the problems are, are great, but we have enough room for treatment. And some rooms are just so bad that no amount of treatment is going to help. And that's the red zone area. And you have to really be careful in this area. And you got to really um, think about getting another room. As an engineer, I have an obligation to tell you the problems are so great, we can't manage most of them. So you really need to find another room. Now, the room doesn't need to be that much bigger in some cases, depending on usage. The yellow part of the room is, or the yellow part of the chart is big enough that, and we have problems like we have in the red zone, but we have room for treatment. And of course, the green area is more ideal all the way across the board in terms of size, volume, usage, and treatment. So the thing we have to realize is the smaller the room, the larger the issues. So what do we do if we have a red zone room and what do we do for treatment? Well, let's take a listening room environment, okay? In this graphic, you can see that we have to have absorption everywhere. And we have to have it on all the wall surfaces because our problems are so big and we obviously don't have any room for diffusion. So absorption is our treatment of choice. It's our only choice because we have to deal with low frequency, middle frequency, and high frequency energy. So our Diaphragmatic absorption with the foam face is a great product for this because it's self-contained unit. You roll it in. It's got everything you need all the way up to 6,500. If we have to uh, treat other parts of the room, we can always do the ceiling. So the listening room is a good example on the red side of all absorption. Home theater on the red side, the same situation. We don't really have room for diffusion because we don't have the distances for waveforms to fully form. And unfortunately, mix the same situation in the red zone. We got too small of a volume, so we have to use broadband low frequency absorption to deal with it. It's always a good choice to use a balance of low frequency, middle frequency, and high frequency absorption combined with diffusion. But unfortunately, in the red zone rooms, we don't have that option. We have to use uh, absorption completely. So this is a little description of the red zone. We're going to talk about the yellow and the green zones next. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.